Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and today I'll be discussing the possibility of constructing a superintelligent agent that doesn't object to being switched off. Future superintelligences are likely to be accurately modelled as self-improving expected utility maximizers. However, it is not yet clear what utility function they are likely to use. Looking at existing synthetic intelligent agents, such as Deep Blue, it seems possible that their utility functions may be extremely complex. Getting the utility function right is important. A powerful superintelligent agent closely resembles a wish-granting genie, but as in traditional genie stories, it is necessary to be careful what you wish for. For example, consider what happens if a gold mining agent is constructed. The resulting agent might then mine the entire planet, converting it to rubble in search of gold atoms. Attempts to switch it off would be strongly resisted, as though the machine is reasoning that if turned off, production of gold would slow down, a terrible state of affairs from the point of view of maximizing gold production. This type of runaway superintelligence is one type of desirable undesirable outcome that can arise from a careless choice of utility function. Poor choices in this area can often lead to negative outcomes. There are some issues associated with whether various proposed architectures will allow us full control over a system's utility function. However, here I will assume that we will be able to engineer systems with whatever utility function we choose. Since poor choice of utility function can have negative consequences for humanity, there seem to be various options. One is to get things right the first time and build a superintelligence which is human friendly and shares human values. However, that seems likely to prove to be a challenging engineering project. If that strategy is taken, it seems likely that other superintelligence construction projects, which are not so choosy about the exact details of their utility function, will materialize first. Another is to provide a mechanism for dynamically updating the utility function to reflect human desires. That poses some technical problems, since superintelligent agents will naturally resist modifications to their utility functions. However, this is essentially the solution that Asimov originally proposed. Asimov's moral robots simply obeyed humans, and subsequent commands could override earlier ones. To explore the possibilities in this area, I will consider a simpler problem here, the problem of whether we can make a superintelligence that suspends its activities after a specified time or on request. If you can stop a superintelligence that is misbehaving, then you can probably reprogram it and then start it up again, thereby obtaining a crude version of a machine intelligence with dynamically config configurable goals. Powerful expected utility maximizers naturally resist being turned off. Being turned off usually eliminates all chances of obtaining utility in the future, normally an extremely negative outcome. However, by careful engineering of the utility function, it should be possible to engineer systems that don't mind being turned off. Steve Omhondro has analyzed this type of system in a talk entitled AI and the Future of Human Morality. Here is a very brief footage. So here is some very brief footage of Steve describing the problem. Uh, and then you turn yourself off. That seems totally harmless to me. How could that possibly have any problems? Then he describes an objection which he attributes to Carl Schulman. Let's think about the guy just as it's about to turn itself off. It's about to flick its switch off. Well, it doesn't have complete knowledge of reality. It has a certain model of reality, and it knows that this model may or may not be correct. And turning yourself off is a very dramatic gesture because it, it, it affects the entire future. In fact, every, everything that you potentially could influence in that future. Um, so if there's even a very small chance that reality is not the way you think it is, then instead of shutting yourself off, it'd be much better to investigate reality. I agree with Steve on very many things, but here I think that the analysis he presents is sloppy. A correctly constructed intelligent agent is not likely to conclude that it should switch itself off because of existential doubts, unless it has good evidence for those doubts. Steve argues that only a small doubt is enough because the negative utility of switching yourself off incorrectly is so large. However, that analysis does not seem to be correct. The utility associated with being turned off is actually one of the parameters under the control of the designers. They can configure this so that it is dynamically equal to the expected utility of being switched on at all times. In such cases, the machine will not really have much objection to being switched off. Next, Steve describes a possible way of resolving his perceived problem. I can fix this, no problem. We'll just change its, its utility definition so that if the world is not the way we think it is, it gets no utility. There. 
Uh, that'll fix it. Um, and so, you know, it's happily thinking that physics is the way it is, and if suddenly something else comes, ah, guess no utility, so it might as well shift itself off. Steve then goes on to poke holes in this argument, saying that such agents would not correctly conclude that they are living in a low-utility real world, and would instead prefer the delusion of a high-utility simulation, drawing an analogy with Cypher wanting to stay in the matrix. Hypothetically, if we grant that conclusion, then it does in fact allow a resolution of the original switching off problem. Simply make the utility associated with being switched off higher than the utility of concluding that the world is some kind of illusion or simulation. To me, it seems reasonable to expect that such agents will, in fact, be built in a manner that makes them value real-world utility much more highly than anything they can obtain via a simulation. As you can see, I find Steve's analysis of this whole issue unconvincing. So, without further ado, here is my own analysis. To give my conclusion up front, I think that engineering a super-intelligent machine that can switch itself off at a specified time is a reasonably tractable problem. Engineering a machine that doesn't mind being switched off by humans, and engineering a machine that switches itself off when it has completed a specified task, are two more closely related problems with very similar solutions. However, there are some issues in this area. Here is my assessment of them. The first problem associated with switching such an agent off is specifying exactly what needs to be switched off to count as the agent being in an off state. This is the problem of the agent's identity. Humans have an intuitive sense of their own identity, and the concept usually delineates a fleshy sack surrounded by skin. However, phenotypes extend beyond that, as Richard Dawkins pointed out in his book, The Extended Phenotype. For machine intelligence, the whole problem is a thorny one. Machines may construct other machines and set these to work. They may subcontract their activities to other agents. Telling a machine to turn itself off and then being faced with an army of its minions and hired help still keen to perform the machine's original task is an example of how this problem might manifest itself. The agent might be actively motivated to perform subcontracting and to construct an army of minions. Such activities may magnify its powers. Also, before such an agent is switched off, it may well naturally want to avoid being switched off, and so might exhibit tendencies to distribute its sensors and actuators widely by subcontracting tasks out or a similar strategy as a defense against its center of operations from being attacked. Next, there is the meaning of the term off. Assuming that we can specify the spatial and temporal extent of the agent, there remains the problem of exactly what constitutes an off state. One intuitive way of doing that is to assert that the machine must not take any positive actions after a specified date. Apart from the issue of what constitutes a positive action, there is a problem with this, namely that it is not likely to lead to the permanent destruction of the machine, as it makes sure it will stay permanently switched off. If the machine is destroyed, also there may be side effects of that. To give an example, side effects might arise if the machine uses a nuclear bomb to affect its own destruction. Also, a destroyed machine cannot be recycled and reused. Finally, there's a dilemma concerning whether such agents should look ahead to beyond their own switch-off date. Preferences concerning the state of the world after the machine is switched off may motivate an agent to micromanage that subsequent state, for example by constructing minions or by subcontracting. In other words, it motivates the machine to continue its operations after it's supposed to be switched off. However, the alternative has disadvantages as well. If there is a future time after which the agent's preferences are not considered, that simply provides a point in time beyond which problems can be concealed. For example, if an agent does not value anything that happens beyond the year 2100, it will not be properly concerned about protecting that future environment from the effects of its waste products. This can be illustrated by an analogy with the antagonistic pleiotropy theory of aging. In that theory, there is a selection pressure to delay the date of expression of deleterious genes, which ultimately results in organisms exhibiting senescence. Similarly, if a superintelligent agent can obtain utility by putting its environmental problems beyond a future barrier, which it can't see beyond, then that is probably what it will do. Of course, this dilemma only applies to the case where the machine has some idea of when it will be turned off. If the switch-off date is down to the whim of humans, it may not have the option of not considering the future beyond a specified point in time. So, next of all, solutions. How can this list of problems be addressed? One thing that might help is to put the agent into a quiescent state before it is, before it is switched off. In such a quiescent state, utility depends on not taking any of its previous utility-producing actions. This step would help to motivate the machine to ensure subcontractors and minions can also be told to cease and desist. 
If the agent is doing nothing when it is switched off, hopefully it will continue to do nothing afterwards. Problems with the agent's sense of identity can be partially addressed by making sure that it has a good, accurate sense of identity. If it makes minions, it should count them as somatic tissue and ensure that they are switched off as well. Subcontractors should not be switched off, but should be told and to cease and desist, and so on. Problems with the definition of the off state can be partly addressed by laboriously specifying what constitutes an off state. Lastly, make sure that the machine is not left running for too long without being turned off and then inspected and reviewed. Such steps would not remove all of the risk of a runaway scenario materialising, but they should be pretty effective. I think that this analysis shows that many of the concerns over runaway intelligent machines will prove to be relatively easily avoidable, assuming that we choose to prioritise safety. However, one problem will still be that there will be a strong motivation not to regularly turn the superintelligent agents off because of how useful they are. Um, enjoy. <laughs>